Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Are we live yet? Are we live? Good morning. Beautiful sunny day here in Crowborough. Welcome to the Shack Shack. Safe, happy and creative. Stay home and craft. How are you doing? Thursday. Thursday. Already. Come on in. Good morning. Hello. Lovely to have your company. I'm chilled today. This colouring is certainly hitting the spot for me. How about you? It's lovely, isn't it? It's lovely. I thought we'd do the leaves today. I spent the last hour and a half sitting here <laughs> colouring in leaves. And, uh, and I got, I really enjoyed it. It's so relaxing, isn't it? Come on in, come on in, grab a seat, bring your tea, bring your coffee, bring a smile. This is the one hour of the day where we get together and we park everything, don't we? Just for an hour. It certainly works for me. You know, we've been talking about our routines, haven't we? Come on in, good morning. You know, how, how vital it is to have a routine, you know? The longer this goes on, the more important it is. I think that we crafters are very, very fortunate. There are a lot of people out there who are completely rudderless at the moment because they didn't have um, something to do. They didn't have a mindful uh, activity to take them out of their heads and get them with their hands. They didn't have that like we do, you know? And, and a lot of people use sport. I've never seen so many people in Lycra running around as now. On the odd occasion when I go out, which is very, very rarely, when I went over to see mum and dad yesterday, so many bikes on the road. Judging by the shape of the people on the bikes, I don't think they're, they're, they're regular cyclists. I think they're, they're just trying to do something to stay fit and stay sane. And I think that's a good thing, don't you? Come on in, good morning. Wouldn't be my cup of tea. <laughs> I got my dad an exercise bike, but we can't, it won't get delivered till August. So clearly everybody bought an exercise bike. Well, there you go. Dad won't mind. Dad won't mind. He's fine. He'll clear a space. Come on in. Good morning. Steve's with us today. Good morning, Steve. Our young Steve Ellen is in the building with you today. So if you have any questions, then he's, he's your man today. He's great. He does a lot at Clarity. He's a key player. He's a key player. And, uh, and he knows. He knows anything that you want to know, he'll know. And uh, he's very good on the website. He's very good on the new Pergamano website. So he's a good person to have in the building with me this morning. Not in this building. Here I'm on my Jack Jones. Now let's make sure. Is the volume working? Is everything? It's 9.58. Maybe uh, let's have a look. Let me just reach over. Not that this helps at all. Honestly, I still haven't cleaned them. Let's have a look. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Everything must be fine. Otherwise you'd have told me by now. Beautiful sunny day here. Bank holiday tomorrow. Not a cloud in the sky. What about where you are? Where are you? Where are you? And uh, what's the weather like? That would be interesting. We're getting people from all over the world, you know. And it's interesting to see how many, how many of you actually tune in live, you know. It's, it's fascinating. There's something really, really uh, amazing, I feel, that right now, here, I'm here on my own, you're where you are on your own, and you're where you are on your own, and you're where you are, and yet we're all together. It's quite astounding, isn't it? It's quite powerful. You know, we all, we, we, we have a go about the internet and Facebook and, and all the negative spin, but wow, when you think about it, you know, yesterday when I was over at mum and dad's, and I had my phone with me and then Mark called from California, FaceTime, and he was able to FaceTime with his grandparents. And then Grace called and she was able to, you know, and it's like having them in the room, isn't it? 
you know. Great. And Mark bought my parents, a, bought us one as well. Fantastic. It's like, um, it's a, a photo frame. It's called Aura. Brilliant. And uh, he got it us for Christmas. Timing is everything. It's perfect. And uh, I set it up in my mum and dad's as well. Last time I was there, I st stood outside the door trying to connect it to the internet, but it worked. And it's like a, a rolling um, photo frame. So I put like 300 photos on my mum's of all sorts of things, all the family, the grandchildren, everybody, the weddings and, and when they were younger as a couple. And I loaded up this, this aura and, and they, they got it right by the, by the telly. And mum says it's like having the family with her all the time because this is every 15 seconds, the photo changes to the next one. And Mark yesterday in San Francisco, I logged him in and now he can add photos from California into my mum and dad's um, photo frame. That's pretty intelligent, isn't it? You know, Vorsprung durch Technik and all that. Good morning. Come on in. It's 10.01. We should get started. Welcome to the Shack Shack. Welcome to the Shack Shack. Week six. Can you believe it? Week six. Now, I have a question before we get started because I want to know the answer. Tomorrow is a bank holiday. It got moved, didn't it? I mean, for me, it all rolls into one anyway because, you know, telly is not a great respecter of, of bank holidays or, or, or celebrations. And so I've always worked whichever. But I have a question for you. Because it's bank holiday tomorrow, are we going to get together or aren't we? I'm easy. I'm up for it. I'm, I'll be here at 10 o'clock. If, but if you want to kind of have a day off, I mean, we get the weekend off anyway, don't we? I think I have a feeling I know what the answer is going to be, but I need you to confirm it that you want me here at 10 o'clock and then we can, we can hang out together for an hour tomorrow as well on bank holiday Friday, VA day. What do you think? Let me know. Let me know. I know what the, I think, I think I know what the answer is going to be. If you can't make it, it's not a problem. There's loads of us. But give me, you know, just, I'm letting you know that I'm going to be here. So you let me know that you're going to be here too, please. Right. Cool. Right. So shall we get started? Because we've been colouring, haven't we, this week? It's been going really well. I'm so impressed with your work. It's amazing. The nut hatches and yesterday the silver birches. And today I thought we'd have a little look at the leaves. Are you up for that? Let's have a look. And, uh, and I'll show you what I've done. And then you can see what I want to do with you today. So you see the leaves. If we, if we look, how's that? I've got all my pens all ready to go. So the leaves, when you look at them in the actual, on the postcard, they just are blank, aren't they? This is so, this is why these postcards are so superb. Because for colouring in, you see, it allows you so much doodle space, if we can call it that. So you can add, you know, like we made our, our silver birch yesterday out of a blank space, didn't we? And now we're going to make these leaves. Look, doesn't that look nice? Let me offer it up to the other camera so you can see it up close and then you'll see what we're going to do. I think let it just focus. Give it a minute. There we are. So you can see now if you look at the leaves, just have a little look. And you'll see that they've got quite they've got yellows. They've got light greens. They've got dark greens. Got a bit of grey in there. It's a little bit of shape, isn't there? There's shape. So we've gone from, from um, a, a blank space like that. Oh, hello, sorry. Let me just put this one next to that one and then you'll see you can go... All oh, right, take my finger out of the way. Daft. Um, so you can see how you can go from an open space like that and you can change it completely. Good morning. Come on in. Right. So that's what we want to do today. That's what we're up for. Is it? I'll show you how to do the leaves and the little hanging leaves and just start building our background. I think it's it's not as hard as it looks once you break it down. It's like everything we're doing. 
when you start to, to break it down, it's all very, very achievable, isn't it? And also, on a simple note, you can see the little, these little reeds here, they're very pretty. And I, toned, I kind of toned them in, artist license. I wasn't sure what colour they were. So I thought, yeah, I think they're sort of husky, aren't they? So I toned them in a little bit with the, with the nut hatches. I thought that was quite nice, right? So, so by the time this is done, the jury is still out on the background. I still am not sure whether, what the weather's like in the background yet. So that's, that's something that we're going to deal with tomorrow. And I've got until tomorrow to figure it out. But I, I'm not sure. Is it going to be a night sky? Is it going to be dusk? Is it going to be a darker blue? Is it going to be a spring day? Is it going to be really light and summery? Is it going to be just, are we going to leave it as it is? I don't know yet. I haven't made my mind up. But just because I decide along a certain road, that doesn't mean that you have to go the same road. I'm just going to show you a couple of little tricks and tips now how to do these, these um, leaves, okay? So what are we using? Right, well, we're either going to use our pergoliners. I am. You can use whatever you've got in the cupboard. But this is what I'm using and this is what we sell. So I'm just explaining that we've got pergoliners. So they're water-based pencils. We're not using the water-based ones. We're using the blending pencils, the 16 blending pencils. Uh, hang on, let's have a look. We've got, yes, that's it, 16 blending pencils. So I'm going to be using a combination of those. They're good. And then, in addition to that, I'm also going to be using my Faber-Castells, my Polychrome. Let me put them up there because I've already picked out the ones I want. And then I've got my Polychromos, my set of 60, the Rolls-Royce, right? So here we go. And, and you can see exactly which ones I'm going to be using. It's all the grey box over here, isn't it? A couple of little greens in there. But these are oil-based. These are the ones that, that really... Um, they're like the blending tools. They're like the blending pens in the in the perga liners. Set the sixty of them. Right now, let's have a look, and and I want to show you. You also need an HB pencil. So I've got mine. I've worked out which ones I'm using. Right, so I've got mine. And what I do is I write it on the back. Right, so I know exactly what colour. Because obviously I'm not going to do it all in one, in one sitting. So I just write on the back that I've used the B3 or the B16 or the Juniper Green. Because a lot of them look the same. You know, and then it, it's just an experience. I, I speak from experience. You go back and then you've done half of it. And then you think, well, hang on a minute. What colour did I use? And then you're miles out and it doesn't look the same. So it's always a good idea to write it down. And what we need. Are you ready to get started? Come on in. Come on in, are you, are you settled? Are you happy? Have you got your sharpener? You need a pencil sharpener as well today. You need a pencil sharpener and you need a rubber. So I'm gonna use my, my Faber-Castelli razor. I've got a bit of copy paper on the side. See, and that helps me just check colors, check things before I go. I, t I tend to just check something out on a bit of paper before I go to task. Just make sure. Yeah? Right, so my HB pencil, this is going to be what helps us create the shape. So if you look at the, the, the leaf, let's start with this one. Okay, let's start with this one. And what we'll do is, I'll show you, this is what I do. Now whether you do this or is, is entirely up to you. I think we're close enough to do this, but what we're going to do is look at the shape, right? I'll come out a little bit with bird there, right? So what we're going to do is look at the shape of the leaf. Are you ready to do this? Let's settle this down, because this does take a little bit of planning, right? And if you look at the leaf, what you'll see is, if there's a fold, very very lightly, you can see. You could create the illusion, if you like, of a fold. So that could be like <clears throat> behind. This is this is the it's the crease here. There could be another one there. 
I'm not saying that we're going to use these. What I'm doing here is I'm giving myself a place where it might fold over. No, I might put one in there just because it's easier. So when I, if I bring this up to you, let me show you and then you'll, you'll see. In fact, let me just, let it get sharp. Hold on a minute. Let it get sharp. Now it's sharp. Right, so what I'm doing is, we do the first one. The first one will take a little bit longer, won't it? And then we'll get into the swing of it. So if you do this, you'll see it's like folds, if you like, like pleats. Call it pleats. And you'll see that comes goes in and it comes up and under. Now, this isn't going to end up, you won't see these lines. This is just our guide. It just breaks the leaf down because we don't want to just do a great big green expanse. We want to make it a bit more interesting. And we're going to, if you look at those, you see I need something, don't I, to work from. Right, so let's have a look. So I've got my, my lines like that. And then what I want to do is I want to make sure, this is just my way of doing it. I want to make sure that I leave a little white area, right, by these lines. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make boxes. I know this looks weird, but I'm going to make literally like really simple little boxes within them like that. Don't worry, you won't see these in a minute. Like there's another one there. Right, so I'm going to make boxes, almost like, if you think about it, like a bit of a cheese plant. Right, let's just, let me just show you. So what we're doing is, we're, it's like lines within lines. There's a little bit of a doodle going on here. If I hold it up to the camera again, let's get a, get a focus on it. So can you see, so it's just, it's lines within lines. And this is going to help me. It automatically will keep me away from colouring in straight up to the line art. Right. And when you're doing this, you don't start saying, I can't do it. You haven't even started yet. All right. And also, you've got one, two, three, four, five. You've got about six opportunities here. <laughs> now, what we're going to do is take a light green to start. So I'm just going to use a yellowish, there you go, earth green, yellowish from the Faber, uh, from the Faber Castell, from the Polychromos. Uh -huh. You can use that one or you could use, there's a nice one here as well, the B7 in the Pergoliners, that's a nice colour. And very, very gently, very, very gently, just like so, we're just going to add a little bit of colour into those boxes that we've just made into those little boxes. So just add a little bit of that, that light, a light green. Start with a light green. And then we'll just, it's a building game. Just trust me on this. And the other thing is, what you have to bear in mind is, that if you don't like what you've done, the rubber, the eraser will just take it straight back out again. And and some a couple of these, when I did when I did a couple of these, they were too dark. I thought, oh no, this is doesn't look right. And I literally just took the rubber and went over the whole thing and it took it right back to lovely. So don't, you know, it's on off, on off. Don't worry about it's not ready yet, is it? We haven't even started. So what we're gonna do is just add that little green in there, like so. The first one always takes the longest, doesn't it? Because we've got to figure out what what the game is. It was like when we did the silver birch yesterday. It took a little while before it looked like anything that you'd want to be uh, showing anyone, right? Right, so we've done that. Got that? Let's have a look. <clears throat> Do you know, I have got a stonking headache today. It's because the weather keeps changing, I think. Right, so you've got that? Are you happy with that? Yes, please, for tomorrow. Good. Glad to see that. Well, that makes two of us. Oh, no, there's three of us. Oh, there's four of us. Perfect. Good. Four's, a, four's good company. Right. And if there's 400 of us, that's okay too. So we've done that. And what we're going to do now, right, let's, we've got that colour down. 
Now the next one is we're going to go to a darker colour. So I'm going to pick, what did I have? Juniper green. I picked juniper green. That's deep cobalt. So I picked juniper green from the Faber-Castell ones, from the polychromos. Uh, there's another nice one here. B6 is a nice kind of juniper greeny colour. Let's check them out. I wonder what that colour's like. Oh yeah, that's nice. It's like a forest green. Juniper's got a bit... There you go, look. Isn't that nice? So it's not that difficult. Or different, sorry. So juniper green, that's what I'm going for. Because I've done that with all of them, so I've got to stick to them now. Right, so what we're going to do now is we'll start at the bottom and we're going to just add a little bit of an accent around the bottom here. Can you see this all right? Or do I need to come in a bit tighter? Oh, here we go. Right, and what we're going to do now is where those where those pencil lines are. I just went over this one. Right, Dame Edna's. Do you think I need to come in a bit tighter? Let's see if I, I might just come in just for this one, just to come in really tight and then... Is that better or is that rubbish? That's better, isn't it? Like that. Right. Yeah, OK. I think you can see that better now, can't you? OK, so what we're going to do is we've got quite a reasonably sharp pencil, right? And just gently now with the darker green, we're going to come in where we made those, those lines, the white lines. We're just going to add a little bit of colour in those areas and around the back like so. So what you're doing is almost giving it like a skeleton look. See, just light flicks like that. And just add a little bit of colour in those areas there. Right. Oh, well, I know it looks weird at the moment. It looked weird to me too. But you watch, when you start to persevere, you've got to give yourself the space to get other colours in rather than colouring over the top all the time. Because when you colour in over the top, it changes the colour, see? So this way you're getting a true colour. And maybe you want to just sharpen your pencil a little bit. Right, so sharpening slowly. We talked about this, uh, didn't we? Just go slowly. Let the wood be cut. If you go too fast, it will crack the wood. And that doesn't matter whether it's a pergolina or a polychromo. If you go too fast, it will crack the wood. All right? So now, let's have a look. You can see this all right, can't you? Now what we want to do next is up this side here, rather than go all the way along, what we're going to do is make um, like a, like steps. See, like that. So you can make, um, it's almost like a, look, do you see what I'm doing? And this is going to be what accentuates the leaf. Once you get into the into the hang of it, see, so you're coming round and you're creating like a little, like a box almost with the darker colour. See how it's starting to look more effective? Look, see, so you come up and then where the white box was, you add a bit of green. So you're making like a, a box. Just flick it. And now I'm going to take my, my dark green I didn't have this headache. Right. There we are, look. So you can see already that you're getting that green going through there, right? Now, get a yellow. Pick a yellow, any yellow. Which one have I got here? Light yellow glaze. There's a really nice one as well in here, which I like a lot. Um, B8. That's nice too. B8. Any yellow. So you've got light green, dark green, and the yellow. And the yellow now, where the, where, the, where the white is, just go over the top now. Just add a little flash of yellow, and that will start to add the, the contrast now. Right, so we've got a bit of yellow going through. Just a little flick. Right, now the spine, if you like, of the leaf. So what we're going to do here, we've got choices. If you've got a sharp pencil, this is easy. If you haven't got a sharp pencil, then get your HB out because that's easy to sharpen, isn't it? Your HB is always going to be real fine look. So if you can go, you might want to use that. We'll use that in a minute anyway. But I'm going to stick to the juniper. 
And what I'm going to do is hold it upright so that it's... So I'm using this, this, the tip of the pencil and I'm just going to run through, leaving a little bit of whiteness as well. See? There you go. So you just add in a little bit of colour to one side of the stalk then a bit of yellow. Where's my light green gone? So you're working three colours all the time, right? Just add three colours. There you go. And then when, you, when you've when you got your white then, your yellow will always tone it down. See, so now you can see how the colours come in together. What we need is a little bit of the depth now around the outside. So use this, the bottom and start to bring in some shadow around the, the base. See? So around the outside and then come in. So what you're doing is you're coming in a little bit with a darker colour. See? So you put a little shadow and then come in over the top of the light one. See? And this is what's going to give you that, that lovely depth. Now how much you, you add is entirely up to you. But can you see how the, the leaf takes a really cool shape on because of the way that we've added that box? This is probably the most difficult thing that we've done this week, in my opinion, is getting these leaves right. But it's lovely to when you when you crack it. See, look, that, doesn't that look different to when you when you look at the empty leaf? How would how would you have coloured this in if it was left to you? Would you have just done loads of green all the way through? See, now that may look lovely too. I'm not saying that this is the right way and that's the wrong way. What I'm saying is this is the way I wanted to show you so that you get a bit more interest in your leaves. Yeah. Now what we're going to do is come round and where I, I'm going to look at the leaf now, <sighs> look at the leaf and just add a little bit of depth. So I'm looking at each, each area now and I think, yeah, I'm going to, let's just have a look at it. Right, so that would be darker there. You've got to look at what you're looking at. Look at what you're looking at. I know that sounds ridiculous, but that's the bottom line. Do you look? At your leaf and you'll see where your shadow wants to be, where your depth wants to be. And and you're looking, this is one of the things that we always do, and, and it's 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 really um, what we tend to do is we focus completely, which is part of the mindful process, but we focus completely on on the leaf so you're looking at the leaf and you're going well that is absolute rubbish but the, the fact is when you look at it in its entirety it's, it's anything but rubbish it's not rubbish at all see so look at the one that I finished and look at this one this is a lot brighter isn't it look see and I and that's because I keep overworking it because I want to show you so much so now what I'm going to do is take my rubber because I've overcooked it and I'm just going to tone the whole thing down and I can take it back just with the rubber. Look, see? So you can take it back. You absolutely can. And then if you, if you want it to be now, it looks great. Look, so you can lay your colour down. If it's too dark, erase it to the rescue, take it back out again. Over a period of time, You'll soon, you'll soon see how many, how many, um, how much pressure, how much attention you want to spend on, on one leaf, right? Where you want the shadow to be. Round the back of him, for example, you probably want to add a bit of shadow, don't you? So I personally would take a grey pencil rather than a green pencil and I would add a little bit of shade here, not with colour, but with darkness there you go see so that's now behind we've definitely established depth there yeah does that make sense a little bit of gray there this is definitely challenging i would say but what is it it's a leaf in a picture that's all it is 
it's a leaf, it's an experiment. It's trying to take a big open expanse and break it down into something that's more interesting. Should we try another one? Should we do another one together? Come on, don't, don't say a word because it's, look how many I've done already. I've been doing them for years. So let me, let me go you, through it again with you. Shall we go through it one more time? Come on then. Right, so we'll take another one. Let's take this one. Let's take another open one here, right? So same thing again. So let's re repeat the process. HB, right? And what we're going to do is look at the leaf, look at it first, and then say, right, so I think that would, could be a fold. That could be a fold. That could definitely be a fold there, see? That could be a fold, that could be a fold, that could be a fold. It's just about giving you, you see, do, do you get it that this could be part of a, see that could be one there as well. Boom. Make one there. Right, so we've got this sort of um, frill leaf. Let's call it a frilly leaf. It just gives you something interesting to get your teeth into. And then what we're going to do is take, go as close as you can and just make boxes like that within those frills that you've just done. Away from the, the centre so that you, you give yourself a bit of wiggle room. That's it, that'll do. It just gives you something to colour. That'll do. How are you doing? I've got that one down now. And then, so, HB, find the pleats, make the boxes, and then three colours. Light, dark. So we start with the one in the middle, the green. And then we'll go to the depth, the dark, and then we'll highlight with the yellow. So you've got light green, dark green, and a yellow, right? This is how I do it. Doesn't mean you've got to do it like that. If it's stressing you out, leave it alone. And just colour it in lovely. You can colour it in lovely. You don't have to do this. But what I'm going to do is stretch myself. So I'm just going to add a little bit of light green in there again. Exactly the same. Because this is all from the same plant, so they've got to look the same now. Right, lightly does it. And don't forget, if you overcook it, all you've got to do is go back in and rub over the whole lot lightly with an eraser. There you go. So you can see, I missed the, I missed the box here, didn't I? Just all we're doing is just giving ourselves because I tell you what's interesting, you look at that one, where's the pencil marks on there? Can you see any of these pencil marks that we drew? It's not there, is it? Not there. So we've done our green. Right, nice. Bit of green around there. Maybe put a bit of flash of green through there, just because it looks more... Yeah, that'll do. Oh, this is this one here, isn't it? Whoa, okay, up we go. Okay. Right, next colour. Now we're going with the, the darker colour. Yeah? And what we want to do now is, that's why it's great, because the, the light, the, where the white is now, it tells you exactly where to add this colour, really, because you've just left your gaps for yourself, haven't you? So you go in and you just add a little bit of flash of green across those areas, like that. Giving yourself a guide, you see. Does that work? This is one of those processes where you say, it's not over till it's over. It's not over until it's over, this one. All right. So a bit of dark green around there, in the areas that you left white. Just lightly, don't need to go too heavy handed. Right, so we've got the, now look at what you're doing, look at what you're looking at, 
right so now we're going to put a bit of a pleat around there so now i want to put a bit of a, an accent what i find is let me show you this this is real basic but you get the effect if you when you color in let me show you see if you can get this let me just put a bit of green in there before you do this just give me a moment to show you this I've overcooked it. I'm over-egging it so that I can show you it. But if you see what I'm, where I'm putting the line, right, if you look here, do you see how I'm leaving a little gap between the outline? So there's like a little rim of white, yeah? And what you'll find is that really makes a difference when you're colouring in, is to leave a little rim. It's like, um, it's like a little flash of light. So if you, when you're colouring in, if you leave a little rim there, it's the same when we do, when we do this here, you see how we leave that little area that we, we gave ourselves that box. See, so for the same way, if I come down here, even though, and I put a little flash in there, like that with my little step, see, every time I do that, I'm leaving a little white area you see or a light let's call it a light area so I come down here and I frame that that green if you like but I'm leaving a gap down here and if I want to really oh hello if I really want to highlight it then I can just take out the color at the back you'll see in a minute see so it's about bringing in blends of color just one leaf at a time. The more you do, the better it will get. One leaf at a time. So bring in a little bit of depth around the outside. Small circular motions, that's it, just like that. So round you go. So you've got that chisel on the inside to give you that, that kind of hooky, see? Like that. And then that's going to come inside. So you just work that in lightly over the top. They're nice when they're done. Right, there you go. There's your, your your fold. There's another little fold there. You just work with the creases. Look at what you're looking at. The more you look at what you're looking at, I know this sounds such a stupid thing to say, but look at what you're looking at. And you'll see, as you do that, it will become apparent. Well, that's the theory anyway. Right, then we'll take a bit of yellow. And we'll add a flash of yellow through there. And that will really, it softens everything up, see. So now, how are we doing? Got a bit of yellow. So you, could, you, you take it away, you put it back. If you think that's all a little bit bland there, take it away. Look, see, if you think, oh, I could have had a little bit of a highlight there, that's what the rubber's brilliant for, because you can take it away, put it back again. All right, and then you can go in. Like, I want to put a flash of, yeah, that's what I want, is a little bit of a, see? If I do that, that's nice. So now I've got like a, a pleat where there wasn't one, see? Right. And then it's up to me how dark I want it to be. So I don't know if you're getting on with this. Like I say, this is a bit of a challenge. If you don't like doing this, then all you've got to do is decide to colour your leaf in the way you want to colour it in you think this is not working for you, then leave it. But I, I felt I wanted to show you because you'll look at that and you'll go, oh, I want to know how to do that. I want to know how she made those leaves like that. How did she do that? Well, that's how I do that. And see, when that's a little bit harsh, I've overcooked it because I'm explaining it to you. But then as soon as I take a, a, an eraser to it, I probably would go in the same direction as the pencil lines. You watch that green toned down now. And the other thing I can do, if I want to tone it down, this is where these little fellas kick in, because I can just come in here and I can tone these down beautifully like this as well, see? So I could either, I'm going to use this in a minute when I start toning down the long thin bits. But this is another really great way of adding colour and taking it away and blending it is with the blending pan. Now we've done that. Let's 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 let that sit for a minute and let that percolate that whole 
that whole idea because you could spend you could spend an age now just working on I do and I and I and I keep going until I'm happy with it and then when I'm happy I walk away from it but what I want to do now is have a look for example at this one here let's look at these leaves the different leaves much easier much easier this one right let's take that middle that middle green shall we let's take the middle green and what we're going to do this will be reminiscent of what we did when we first started you're going to go in the tip and in the base do you remember when we did the 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 wrap let me get me dame edna's on because this is quite tight isn't it right that's better right so top and base let's just do the all the tops and the bases Mm -hmm. Is that okay? This is easy, isn't it, after the last ones? Right. At 11 o'clock, believe it or not, I'm on telly. <laughs> um, on Hochanda. And um, it's a Pergamano show. And I decided, because... First of all, I'm doing it. And secondly, there are a lot of people starting out. And so I decided to take it right back to the beginning and go slow it right down with the Pergamano show. Slow it right down. Take it back to the beginning. And also um, take it back to real um, tricks and tips. You know, like, yeah. So I, I looked at... Linda Williams, bless her, she did the artwork for me so that I could show you what to do. And then and then I looked at it and I thought, well, this could take days, you know, and I've only got little 10 minute, 15 minute slots on the telly. So I thought, right, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to pick the useful bits out and I'm going to showcase those, those tricks, what I consider to be useful, you know, so if you if you if you're new to our our clarity family and you're not sure what I'm talking about then check out hochanda.com at 11 o'clock because it's it's parchment art it's it's very different to what we're doing here but I know a lot of you doing this a lot of you doing this already know what um what a mindful process the groovy system is so Linda's I'm, I'm looking for all the, the leaves that are the same type and I'm just doing the top and the bottom like this. So Linda, apart from being a brilliant friend, she's also a brilliant parcher and she she's designed these lovely garden plates. And I think you'll you'll find when you when you what have I got here? Yeah, when you when you look at the plate, it's just gorgeous. This the new one that I'm showcasing today is um, a rose, a rose arch, really lovely, like for weddings and things like that. Right, let me just let me just show you what I want to do now. Right, when you've got this, you've got choices. You could take the same color. Right, see the same color pen, and what we're going to do if you if you're more comfortable using an HB pencil, then you can just flick the HB pencil from the top and from the, like that. So you flick it through like that and then you flick it through that way. So you go in that way and that way, right? So you come in down and up, see? So you can, you can either use a lead pencil or you can use the same green pencil. Do you see what I'm doing? So let me show you with the green one. It's a softer. It's softer, isn't it? Look. It's softer. Even though it's a... You might want to sharpen it a bit. It's just a softer. It's softer than that, isn't it? So it's entirely up to you. You can do both. Just put a little accent of green on, on it, on the lead pencil. Choices, choices, choices. But that's quite a nice look. I quite like that. And if you want to darken it inside there, you can either take the darker green and just go in on that, just in on that corner there. See? 
Just put a little tiny tip of depth. Need a good sharp pencil to do that though. There you go, that's nice, isn't it? See how it makes it look really, because you're leaving a little flash of um, white. So it looks like the light's hitting it. That's what's important. So if you take a leaf, if you take a leaf, let's just take a pencil here. And let's just, if you take a leaf like that, let's just, let's just draw a leaf. There you go. Like so. Right. When you, when you colour it in, like this, you're going to colour to about here to here with the light colour, like the, the, the lighter colour. So you're going to like light feathery strokes and they're going to come up and they're going to stop when you get to there. And the other way, you're going to go this way, right, light feathery strokes. This is so much like parchment really. This is, if you tune in at 11 o'clock, this is exactly the same except we do it with an embossing tool on parchment and it just makes it whiter, right. But it's the same thing. And what we're going to do is use light feathery strokes to there, right? Then if you want to make it more um, structured, you can take the same colour, but you're only going to go halfway up like this. So you take the same colour, press a bit harder. Now in parchment, what you'd do is you'd, and what I'm doing now is I'm leaving a little line. You know, like we've made a pencil line in the leaf. I'm just creating, see the line that I'm leaving? Right, I'm just holding the line, but I'm only going halfway up. So now I'm going to here. If I had a pencil, I'd make a little mark like I did what we did before. Just make a little mark like that and it will stop you going over to that edge, right? That's all that was for. Right, do you follow me? So now what that's doing is that looks like there's a spine up here and look here. Right. So now we've got the darker. So you've gone, you've gone like two thirds of the way here, halfway. Then you go a third of the way. And then if you want to make it look really, really like um, three dimensional, then you'll take the dark color and you'll go. Uh, if there's if this is three quarters of the way and this is half the way, then this is a quarter of the way with the darkest color. And then you're just going to add a little flash of depth in the, the tip. Let's just go in the tip like that. But you don't even go. Do you see what I mean? So you you keep the the darkest colour just in the in the tip. And that's what gives you that that lovely three dimensional look. And you leave you leave the See, and then this, if you want to, you can take your blending tool and you can blend it straight into the into the corner like that. It will blend it straight in or you can leave it gritty. But the idea is that you're leaving. See, I, I'm, I'm deliberately leaving a little flash of white so it looks like a spine along that edge. And then, yeah, and then and then this side of the leaf, if you like, that side of the leaf here, if you're going to put any color anywhere, it'd be there. So that's how you get that lovely um, contrast on a leaf. And in essence, that's what we're doing here. Is that okay? Are you comfortable with this? Is it working all right? Okay, good. So where were we? Yeah, we were on this one, weren't we? See, and then artist license, I also think what's quite nice is a little flash of yellow just a, a little f flick of yellow through each leaf and it starts to tie it all in. Look, it, it, just a little accent, but it stops it being white, doesn't it? So, so that's quite nice. Just a little flash of yellow through there. Right, so they're easy, aren't they? Those ones are easy. Now, what about these reeds? These look good. Should we do the reeds? Let's have a look. Cool, yeah, let's get on with the reeds. Right, so I was looking at these this morning and I thought, hmm, I know what to do with these. Personally, I would use an HB pencil because all the time what we're doing is we're creating a, a, a like a, an area that's not. Look, let me show you this. If I if I do this really extreme, right, if I colored that in with a lead pencil, you'll see it's that there that you're after. 
that's what gives it that lovely uh, the depth right is when you when you leave a little white gap there that's it there see and it looks like um, like um, like the light is hitting it you know it's the little things like that do you see it I know I'm I'm, I'm over egging it now trying to show it to you but if you if you see it you see the little white line well, after a while, it's just it's just cutting in really and not not doing it. Which is when we were when we were doing these leaves here. That's why we were making those pencil marks to stop us going into that area so that we could get that that shade. And what I want to do on these ones now, on these long ones, I've got the long ones to do, and then I want to do these ones as well, the little brown ones. They're easy, right? So the long reeds. Let's look at them. Now, what I did was. Because I wanted them to look a little bit more. Let's look up close at them. Right. Let's have a look. You see they're kind of, they've got a kind of bit of texture in them, haven't they? So we'll do a little doodle that I'll show you. We've done this. We've done this in the last couple of weeks. As you go, follow one of the reeds, right? And what we're going to do is go really lightly in the middle with a sharp HB, dash, dot, dot, dash, dot, dot dot dash dot 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 we did a little bit of this didn't we so you're going to go up there there it is again dash dot dot right up the center and you just go dash flick 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 dot flick 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 dot flick 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 dot 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 just keep going up till the to the tip like that do a couple of them we might as well we're here now right go up dash dot 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 they're just little tricks really I, I always find an HB pencil helps immensely. Right, there you go. So we've got a couple of them. This is nice. You watch. These are easy. So I start from the bottom and I go up, dash, dot, dot, dot. They're overlapping as well now. Take your time. Take your time. Right, so now we've done that. Now what we want to do is take the yellow, take the lightest colour and just run a flash of yellow lightly and when we do this we'll keep it light remember you don't want to press too hard because if you press too hard and you get a seal then you won't be able to add any other color will you so let's just go over the HB markings that we've done with a light yellow like that there you go easy All right already looking better isn't it See, and now that tones down your dot, dot, dash, dash, your little dashes and dots. So when you've done that, then we'll take our, I'm going with the same green as I, they all, they all seems to be the same sort of animal here. And now what I'm going to do is just go along at the bottom, right? Like feathery strokes, like that, but just that one side. So you've got to decide, right, the bottom it's definitely shady. And where they overlap, like that, there's one behind the other one. So this one's going to be a bit darker there, isn't it? All right, so we'll do that. And then up we'll go. And we'll we'll decide now that like I'm going to go up the side of this. Just up the side. So up the side of this one, like that. Just keep running it. We've done so much of this with a grey pencil over the last few weeks. This shouldn't be hard. And then the same on this side, I'm going to go up there, but I'm going to just kiss the edge of the reed with the tip of the pencil and just keep flicking it through like that. Just flick it through till you get to the top. So you've got depth on one side, you see, and then light on the other. And then on this one, light's coming from here. So I'm going to, I'm going to turn the artwork round and I'm going to bring the, the shadow in on the bottom like that. So round we go. Piece of cake this is. Right. Like that. And then suddenly, and if you think you've overcooked it, then you can just take your, you've got choices. You could take your blending pen and just run through and blend the yellow and the green or take your eraser and just run through the whole thing like that. Nice. See that works. See, it's back to that boyfriend of mine who just used to use a, didn't matter what he, he just used whatever worked. If it, it loo rolls, hair dryers, 
you name it, just to get the result. And if, if it means putting it all on and then taking it all off, then so be it. But we get a really good result. You wait when you start when you start layering up all the all the layers, that's when it starts to really come into its own. What we tend to do as um, as uh, crafters, we we isolate the area and then we stare at it until we don't like it. We're very, very critical, right? But really what you should be doing is taking your artwork and and holding it back and saying yeah okay that's working now you look at it as a whole not the individual leaf and go oh I don't like that petal you know you look at the 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 overall impact and until you put down the 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 layers like this you can't you know this isn't finished yet I haven't I haven't added the shadow in the background when I start to when I start to build for example the, the shadow on the tree here of the of the reeds, you know. I haven't finished that yet. It's not done yet. But the overall impact is starting to look really, really nice. So finally, I thought today we'd have a look at these little husks. Because these are nice up here. And what I wanted to do there, a bit of artist license, I went back to the, the colour that I used on the um, nut hatch. These are real easy. And all I want to do is just show you what, what I did. You could do what you like. This is just simple colouring now. So if you just lightly add a, a layer, an entire layer of, of the peachy colour that was on the nut hatch. How's that sound? Like that. There you go. How's it going? Is everybody happy? This is um, really relaxing. Right, so you put them in, just spot them. It will fill up, you wait, right? And when you've done that, then what we're gonna do, let's have a look here, because then you'll see what I've done is, I've taken a couple of browns, haven't I? So I've taken, You've got browns in the polychromos. You've got browns in the pergoliners. You've got some really nice colours. You can mix and match them. Yeah. So let's see what I used. I used walnut brown and raw umber. That's that one. There you go. Those are the two that I used. Just got to stick to the plan here a little bit. So what I'm going to do now is take my lighter colour. Do you remember what we just what I just showed you with the leaf? It's the same principle, except now I'm going to take my lighter colour and I'm just going to come up here like so. You see this all right? So up we go like that. Up that one. Down there like that. Right. And then what I did was I decided that this needed a bit of depth on that side as well. So I made a kind of a you need a nice sharp one for this one. Sharp is good, right? So a little bit at the top, a little bit on either one, and then in the middle, like a, almost like a pair of trousers. Do you see? Let's try a different one. Go in the top, light feathery strokes. In the bottom, coming up, light feathery strokes. Really, I'm hardly touching the, I'm really hardly touching the paper. And then in the middle, I just come up, I've decided that this here needs a bit of a, a flash. So when you do that side there, it looks like there's a layer. Do you see? See how easy it is? One more. Let's have another go. So this one, it's an optical illusion. That one, the two tips, lightly, lightly, lightly. And then this is going to be above this one. This one's underneath. So I come up like that, I continue this line and I add a bit of shadow there because this one's underneath. Do you see? And then that immediately looks as if it's three-dimensional. Flat as a tack, 3D. It's cool, isn't it? I love it. All right, so that's how they work. That's how they work. Very addictive, this is. Top. 
light feathery strokes coming down. You can always make the artwork come to you. If you feel you're a little heavy handed, then you just make the artwork come to you and just flick away. I find flicking away is good. Although these little areas like this, it's quite straightforward really. Then you flick up like that from the tip. And then when you get to that, if this is gonna be the bit that's underneath, then that needs a bit of shadow there. And it, we're gonna continue it up there a little bit. That's a little bit extreme gray. Right, like that. See? Nice. Piece of cake. Those ones are, aren't they? So we've done the more difficult one we started with, because I thought that was the best way to go. But when you think about it, it's it's just a, a straightforward, it's, it's a straightforward, um, I tell you what I, in the colouring books, let me, we've got the colouring books as well. You don't need to buy the colouring books. I'm just saying, what I'll do is, loads of you have got this, because I did, I don't know if anybody looked at it actually, but when you, let me just show you something, right? Here we go, right. In the colouring book, and I can, I'll do this as a step-by-step -step on my blog. If you have a look, have a look at the, like, have a look here. See how I've broken down the steps. Look, I've broken down the leaves. Keep going. Look, you watch. Now, let's come down here. You see? And I'm doing exactly, see how I'm breaking it down for you? Look. And so what I think I'll do, I'll put this on my blog. So you see exactly, look, let's go to this one. There you go. Now you start to see, look, see that spine on the leaf. So I think what I'll do is I'll get the artwork from this. I'll get the artwork from this and I'll drop it into a PDF. Yeah, let's just drop it into a PDF. Steve will do that for me, won't you, Steve? We'll get the artwork, we'll drop it into a PDF, because it's got to be somewhere, because we printed the books. And then we'll give you that, so you, you've got a step-by-step -step how, to, how to make leaves like that. Because it really is, uh, it makes such a difference, and it's so easy to make those little boxes within the leaf before you start colouring in. Okay. So, so I think that'll do for today. I think you've got plenty to... Well, let's have a look. Where, where are we? Let me just have a look. Okay, I'll tell you what I'm going to do before tomorrow, right? I'm going to finish. This is my task today. I'm going to finish the, um, the silver birch. I'm going to finish the reeds and the leaves. And I'm going to finish my birds so that the background... I'm, I'm still going to be, it's the background that is going to be the challenge tomorrow. And that's what we'll, we'll look at. We'll do a finishing, we'll finish it tomorrow. So I'm going to take it through to birds done, silver birch done, and all the greenery done. And then we'll have a look at how we're going to complete, shall we? Should we do that tomorrow? Well, I'm here at 10 o'clock. That's what I'll do. And then at 11 o'clock, in a minute... Right, let me just show you the artwork that's going to be on her chanda with the parchment. This is so pretty. Look, so so this is um, the card that Linda made. Isn't that lovely? Look, there's our rose arch. Right, this is parchment art now. And all I'm going to show you is how to cut this out and how to change a plate like this plate here, which is... This is the new plate, let me show you. It's got the, the dots on it here, like that, right? And it's how to change that to that. That's about all I'm, that's what I'm gonna show you, which is pretty cool, yeah? And then, look at that. Isn't that pretty? And this is, um, this is something else that I want, to, I want to show off as well. So thanks, Linda, for doing that for us. And, um, that's a that's a, just a parchment and groovy plate um, session that's going to be taking over. So those of you who are um, 
still wondering what to do and you want to take a break from the leaves then perhaps pop over to Hochanda and have a look at the the parchment art and just um, watch me spend 10 minutes doing so, just about that much it's amazing how long parchment takes but it's the mindful process you know and you have to give time time it's the same with the coloring in if you give it time and you practice you'll get better and better and the better you get the more you'll want to do and the more you do the better you get and the more you'll want to do and that's how it works and it's the same with parchment art it's like everything that we do and in the end all we're trying to do is clear our heads get rid of the headache stop worrying about stuff we can't control and be creative you know, and and I know that when you master these leaves, you were so chuffed about the silver birch, now be chuffed about the leaves. OK, and I'll be back. Uh, share, like and follow and all that good stuff. Follow, like and share. Spread the word. Tell people about the Shack Shack. The longer that we're in lockdown, the more people that are going to be looking for something to stay, to stay sane or just to, to do. There you go. There's a word. Just something to do. So thank you for joining me. I hope that that was enjoyable and uh, I hope that I see you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock and, uh, and I'm going off to the factory now. I've got a plan I need to put in place over there too. So I'll see you later. Lots of love. Bye-bye now.